Our ancestors could not possibly have seen all the amazing technology that we are surrounded by today. But what about us? Would we also be shocked if we were shown the technology of the future? It's looked upon as obvious today that children are growing up in a world that is very much different from the world their parents grew up in. It didn't used to be like that. During most of human history there haven't been much change from one generation to another. If we go a few thousand years back, not much would change in a hundred years. Now a lot happens in ten years. It's not only in the evolution of technology that change has happened faster and faster. The same goes for biological evolution. We're not sure, but we think there is roughly 3.8 billion years since life appeared on Earth. But only 2 billion years, roughly half that time, since the first complex cells appeared. Only during the last fourth of the time there has been life on Earth have we had organisms with more than one cell. And only during the last sixth of the time have we had animals. The first mammals appeared roughly 200 million years ago, meaning that there has been life on Earth for 19 times as long as there has been mammals. And then we have us, humans. Only 200,000 years ago did we start looking as we do today, meaning that there has been life on Earth for roughly 19,000 times as long as we've been here. Of our 200,000 year old history, roughly 10,000 have taken place after the invention of farming and less than 300 years have taken place after the start of the Industrial Revolution. No way are things going to stop progressing here. We're just getting started. I think we're grossly underestimating the future by thinking linearly instead of exponentially. If you count to 30, you get to 30. But if you take 30 steps exponentially, you end up with 1 billion. We're evolved to think linearly, but a lot of the technological progress that's taking place is exponential. Take for example Moore's Law. Moore's law states that the number of transistors that can be placed in an area doubles roughly every 18 to 24 months. Here is a graph that shows Moore's law since the 1970s. At first it seems like a linear progression, but that's because the y-axis is exponential. Meaning that the straight line doesn't increase with the same amount again and again, but increases tenfold again and again. A thousand, ten thousand, a hundred thousand, and so on. The graph shows an increase of a million fold which is what we would expect with Moore's law. The shrinking of two-dimensional circuits made of silicon will end sooner or later. But newer technologies that can carry on the exponential improvement for a long time are underway and will be there in time. Moore's law is just one out of several exponential and predictable trends within information technology. I won't go through all of them, but I will show you a couple of more graphs with exponential y-axis, all taken from inventor and futurist Ray Kurzweil. This graph shows the average price of transistors. In 1968 you could get one transistor for one dollar. While in 2002 one dollar could buy you almost four million transistors. This graph shows the price of magnetic data storage. And like the other graphs it has an exponential y-axis. It turns out that in 2004 you could store more than 19,000 times as much per dollar as you could in 1990. This graph shows how many calculations per second you can buy for a thousand dollars. And like the other graphs, it has an exponential y-axis. However, since the doublings are going faster and faster, the curve is still bent. In 1900 we saw a doubling every third year. In 1950 we saw a doubling every second year. In 2000 we saw a doubling every 12 months. And now the doubling time has decreased to less than 11 months. Computers continue to be able to do more and more impressive things. Recently a computer from IBM was able to beat the best human players in Jeopardy. Still, computers are nowhere near as amazing as the human brain. They can't read a book and understand what it means. And they don't get your jokes. But will they one day? Will computers once be able to do everything we can do? At least it should be possible in theory. We know that because we already have a machine that thinks like we do. The human brain. That might sound like a stupid thing to point out, but think about it. If we want to learn how a machine can think like we do, we can learn how it can be done by looking at how the brain does it. Still there is more we don't know about the brain than we do know, but our knowledge about the brain is increasing, and our ability to study it is increasing exponentially. According to Ray Kurzweil, the space resolution of brain scanning is doubling every year. To me it seems obvious that it's a question of time before we understand the brain and are able to imitate what the brain does with computers. And as we understand more and more of the brain it's also a question of time before we understand what distinguishes the brain of a genius from the brain of a normal person. If we can imitate what the brain of a normal person does, we should also be able to imitate what the brain of a genius does. 
once we fully understand the principles underlying genius, we should sooner or later be able to make computers that are smarter than any human who has ever lived. Imagine thousands of digital Albert Einsteins, Sir Isaac Newtons, Thomas Edison's, and Leonardo da Vinci's working together. Think about how much that would hasten the progression of science and technology. But it doesn't stop there. These computers could also keep the advantages that computers already have over humans. After all, computers don't have to sleep. They think a lot faster than the human brain does. And they don't make careless mistakes. They have perfect memory. They can access all the world's knowledge through the internet. And they're a lot better at thinking mathematically than we are. And so on. With these super machines, we can imagine that scientific and technological progress would go a lot faster than it does today. They would be able to take science and technology to a whole new level. But it doesn't stop there. These machines would also be better than us at creating intelligent machines. Enabling them to design machines that are even smarter than they are. Which again would be able to create machines that are smarter than they are. Which again would be able to create machines that are even smarter than they are. And so on. This explosion of science, technology and intelligence has been referred to by many as the singularity. Futurist and inventor Ray Kurzweil has theorized extensively about this and written a book called The Singularity is Near. He estimates that the singularity will take place somewhere around the year 2045. Considering the amazing feats we already have achieved with the very limited intelligence we have today, we should have great expectations for what can be done with such intelligences at our disposal. Just about anything that's theoretically possible for us to do will also be practically possible.